Hello beautifuls, welcome back to my Chanel. Well, my loves, I didn't realize that America's Next Top Model would have this many uh, scandal girls in order for me to cover on this channel. Shall we just say that? We're gonna take a little break from regular scandals that are covered by America's Next Top Scandal Girls, and we're actually gonna listen to what Tyra Banks had to say about, well, about all of this, really. All of this throughout her entire career. So, there is a podcast slash, like, beauty news uh, channel here on YouTube called Chicks in the Office, run by two gorgeous ladies who are called Rhea and Fran, and they managed to get a little interview with Tyra Banks in order to really understand exactly uh, what was going down um, during basically everything that I've kind of covered in this video. So believe me, there is actually more scandals co to cover. I almost lost my words then. Believe me, there are more scandals to actually cover. So this is not going to be the culmination or the crescendo of this series, sadly, my loves. Um, there's a lot more, should we say? There's a lot more. I've seen it like all around YouTube and it is called Tyra Banks Apologizes for ANTM Mistakes. Now, um, I'm just on the video right now and the dislike ratio is pretty high. It's got 4,000 likes and 897 dislikes. That's quite a high dislike ratio. Really? I mean... I do wonder what they're going to ask her in this video and how she is going to respond. So I thought today we could take this journey together, my loves, take it together and really try and understand exactly what was going on in her mind when she did all these things and when she signed off on them as an executive producer for the series of America's Next Top Scandal Girls. So with that being said, are we ready? The video is nine and a half minutes long, so I don't really know what we are expecting to see, but let's pop in my ohrongwala. No, we can't because that's the wrong orifice. And let's have a little listen, shall we? Shall we have a little listen? Let's have a little listen. Oh, my internet is failing. That's really helpful. Thank you. I want to talk about America's Next Top Model, obviously, because it's one of the biggest shows. And reality. we grew up, we, we watched that show, it. yeah. One of the biggest competition shows. Looking back now, is there anything you would change about the show? Um, because yes. obviously there's a lot Everything. of talk about it now, and even though course, it's yeah. iconic and we love it, but it's it's being brought back into the conversation. So what are your thoughts on it looking back? Yeah. So can I just, for context, this video was uploaded six months ago, so like, it's really recent. So, you know, it's interesting because I started America's Next Top Model um, as a very early voice about diversity and inclusion. We were way before what is a trend now that I hope becomes the norm. Uh, we opened so odd choice of words there to call diversity and inclusion a trend. Yeah, we have an odd voice of words there, odd choice of words. And also you weren't because you said LGBT people need to uh, squash themselves down and make themselves less loud. You said that to a lesbian contestant on America's Next Top Model. And then also you minimized the contestant struggles because if they spoke out against you and the production team, you would be like, no, time to send you home. So champion of inclusion and diversity. Mm so many doors and my my um, partner's uh, Korean American I'm sorry um, his wife is Korean he is uh, Chinese his kids are half um, so he's a uh, Korean I'm um, sorry Chinese American <laughs> I, I, there's a reason why I keep doing that because they have a fun name they combine both of their they names combine it okay. yeah private stuff. but <laughs> that yeah. I was like that's their I'm own the family okay. and kids okay. I'm the mom and yeah. their kids they do something fun. I'm not gonna say yeah. what they what it is because it's private but they combine so that's why I get it confused sometimes but um no he's Chinese American the same as Ken Mock and um, and so it was our mission to to be diverse and to push back when we were told that we couldn't be as diverse. Um, so from from people didn't even know what a plus size model was like 20 years ago. They're like, what? What is that? And and even now, when we look at what a plus size model is today, our girls were skinny. And even back yeah. then, designers that my 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 models back then would go on go sees and the, the designer wouldn't even have clothes that fit them. So it was just being on the beginning of something and pushing through. Um, at that same time, I was still a working model and still being told, oh, you're too fat, Tyra, you're too this, you're too that, you can't work if you can't do that. And hearing my friends have all this negativity. And what has she got to do, what has any of this got to do with the question they asked? What was the question they actually asked? Let me just actually go back and listen to that. So do you regret anything that was on America's Next Top Model? Because I'm a bit confused there. Hang on, listen to the initial question. And now she's gone on this like two and a half minute rant that seems completely unrelated. I want to talk about America's Next Top Model, obviously, because it's one of the biggest shows. And reality. we grew up, we, we watched that on show, it. yeah. One of the biggest competition shows. Looking back now, is there anything you would change about the show? Um, because obviously there's a lot of talk about it now, and even though... 
is there anything you would change about the show? And then what we got was a two and a half minute semi rant about inclusion, diversity, and plus size models, of which none of this is answering the question. In hearing my friends have all this negativity and seeing what was in the way of them working. Um, but I was still this like unique beauty crusader. I was also this person trying really? to get these models work. Were you though? And Were you trying to get them work? Was this trying to get them work? Was that trying to get them work? I think that what we actually need to look at and what she needs to respond to is that she wasn't making a modeling program. She was not making a show designed to uplift women into the modeling industry and champion diversity. What she did in her show was create reality TV humiliating people for ratings that's what she did so when she says like she had this happening in her ear and people were saying like oh it's ne like you can't look like this you're too big etc i do understand that that is a trauma that you carry with you i've had similar things said to me in like various aspects of my life of you're to this or you're to that to be like included in the conversation or even included in the consideration for work shall we say so while i do understand that i do not quite understand why she's trying to sell us this story of like oh actually i was the one who was really upset with everything and I was the one who was mistreated so therefore I invited people onto my show to mistreat them and I think at times they battled because I wanted them to get work but even more important to me was being a beauty, beauty crusader and so what ends up happening is that it's a you won't be a cover girl with a gap tooth does that sound like a beauty crusader to you flash right I'm saying oh I want all these unique beauties but you need to change that and you need to change that because I have these agents in the background saying that's what your makeover section is for. Your entire makeover section is for literally being like, you can't look the way you do because it's not acceptable enough. We need to do all of this to you. And a lot of those makeovers went even further than just like putting a weave in or like cutting the hair off. A lot of it was just like, okay, you need to have your gap tooth made wider or you need to have brand new teeth in order to make you more digestible for a wider audience, which is not celebrating or championing beauty. It is in a way ridiculing and mocking individual beauty saying yeah you want us to sign these girls but she needs to change this and she needs to change that and that's how she's going to work and um i wrote a book with my mom um and in the book i talk about that i talk about some of the things on top model that in hindsight and this is way before any of this stuff uh trended recently this is a couple years ago i was like in hindsight i should have still been that beauty crusader that is my heart and soul and why i started the show to the millions of people that are watching the show and then let the agents handle behind the scenes if that model wanted to fix teeth or whatever it is that they said that they needed to fix in order to work in this industry. I don't so think. That was like my big lesson. But you just simply said, you just said, I am a beauty crusader. And then five seconds later, you're like, I was writing a book with my mum because I lost what it meant to be a beauty crusader. So what's the truth? And I didn't need social media to tell me that. I realized that on my own and, and did a whole- So why didn't you do an expose on it? Why didn't you do like a documentary? Like you are an, a high up, high profile model if you're to lead, lead us to believe that. Then why didn't you do something majestic and magical and really empowering instead of just carrying on through the cycles of America's Next Top Model right up until like 2018 or 2017 when it was like still airing. Why haven't you offered to go to Netflix or to go to Hey You or wherever America's Next Top Model is now um, hosted and be like, right, we are going to do at the end of the series, we're going to do a commentary episode, a brand new commentary episode where I'm going to talk about my process through this or, and understand a few things about what we did that maybe weren't acceptable and here is why and here is the reasons as to why I was thinking that way and here is the, like you could do so much you are Tyra Banks. Like, I'm sure you just have eager, especially now, I'm sure companies are eager to produce stuff with you. You could even produce it yourself. You could even start your own YouTube channel and be like, right, today we're going to sit down and do... You could react to your own things and just be like, this is what I want to correct and I want to come clean and I want to explain why this was happening and why this, this happened the way that it did. But you're not. I don't feel like you're giving any answers and I'm going to stop interrupting right now because I'm getting all heated, girl. Section of my book about that um there's another thing that we did i think that was a big like whackness that i didn't see um back in the day was um we we did an episode a season in hawaii and uh, barack obama had just won the presidency everybody was so proud about that um we learned the hawaiians when we were there a lot of them were saying that um 
uh, talking about Hapa. And I was like, what is Hapa? They're like, oh, Barack Obama's Hapa. Means he's mixed, mixed race. And then we're like, oh, maybe we should do a Hapa episode to explain what that is. Mm, so I don't think, sis, I don't think. And the reason why I say, oh, that's a face to pause on, isn't it? A reason why I say I don't think that is, is you can't just say, oh, we were already in Hawaii. Like, we didn't know what we were going to do. And then we, we just decided to just do all this photo shoot, just like on a whim. And I didn't really understand what was happening. No, you would have planned that entire series out from start to finish, including who you wanted to win, because this was a reality TV series. It was not just a modeling show. What it actually was was an overly produced up and down storyline television show designed for drama episodes and ratings and like characters and their arcs throughout the entire series like that's why you have bottom twos that's why you have winners because you're creating a storyline and you individually pick each image in order to create that storyline along the way so the idea that you're just like oh we just happened to be in hawaii with everyone and we didn't quite understand what was happening and i just thought yeah let's do a happy photo shoot I don't think that's correct. We had the models play mixed race. We had them play half Madagascar, half, I don't, I don't remember what the, the races were and the mixes yeah. and, the, and the races. And because I'm a woman of color, I thought I was celebrating skin color to say, this is beautiful. The industry and everything is telling you that. The thing is, Tyra, at this point, you weren't saying the skin you're in is beautiful. You were saying wear somebody else's skin to be beautiful. And that is where the problem lies cream is what you should do lighter is best all this type of stuff you know and me even knowing that me being a lighter skinned black person has allowed me to do a lot of the things and burst open the doors because of my skin color and because of my green eyes and all that i was like you know i'm going to show the world that color is beautiful and we're going to paint these models when that episode aired i don't know was it 10 years ago there was a backlash saying what are you guys doing painting these girls black painting them brown painting them and i was like oh my gosh back then i was like i think my skin is beautiful i think all this is beautiful and coming from a black person it's obviously not racist because i am saying that this is beautiful and paying homage i don't feel like i can talk on that specific sentence because i don't feel like i have the credentials to talk on it um i'm just gonna say one little thing about that because i don't want to like step on any toes or or say something that could come across as me not understanding and i'm just literally going to say in this sort of a situation while you might while i find it difficult to exactly say what racism is because i'm not subjected to that level of prejudice i know it when i see it and I feel like that photo shoot is it. Do you know what I mean? Let me know what you guys think in the comments box below about that because I feel like this is quite a touchy subject because as I say, I am a white woman who's just talking about this, like who's just bringing it to light on my YouTube channel. And I want to make sure that the people who are affected by this get the chance to speak as to why this was racist and why this was incorrect to have happened to them. However, the mistake was that if somebody that has malintent sees me doing that, they'll think that their malintent way of darkening skin is okay. And so I was like, oh my God, it was like an awakening for me. And I had a talk show, like y'all have y'all show. But it wasn't new. The thing is like, um, the whole race swapping thing wasn't new. It wasn't like only happened in the 20, and in the, in the, it only happened in the noughties. It happened before. And it was, there's a long cultural history of it. That's like alarming. So... I don't know how she could have misconstrued that then. Uh, yeah. Back in the day, I had a talk show and I did a whole segment on it and said, whoa, as much as I was trying to be woke okay. and say yeah. my skin is beautiful and I'm going to... I have not seen this section that she's talking about in this talk show. So if you would like me to add that into another episode of America's Next Top Scandal Girls, why don't we do that? I paint people like my skin and darker skin and all this and show all this, these different races. It gives an excuse for people that have malintent. And so we apologize for that. Now, everybody didn't see the damn Tyra show. So yeah. <laughs> 10 years later, right. you know, during COVID-19, people are quarantined and they're watching Top Model and they're seeing all these mistakes and things that we made. Um, and so I think it is my job to not be mad at a younger generation that didn't see it. It is my job to apologize again because they didn't okay. see it, right? Okay. They didn't see me do okay. that. And so I have to continue to apologize. 10 years from now, this will be a whole nother generation. Yeah. And there'll be some other reason. They'll be snowed in one day and watching Top Model. What the hell did she do? This 50 something year old woman, da da da. I have to apologize again because they didn't see this and what I'm doing now and what I've done okay. you know, over the years. So that's just the state of the world yeah. now that you know that people see content over and over again and they don't know that 
you've apologized and, and I don't fault them for that. That's not their fault, but it's my job to say, yes, mm, I've apologized. Okay. Her, and we're going to apologize again and keep. So she has at least recognized that she's in a position of privilege now where she can actually apologize for these things and try to set the record straight. I must admit, I haven't seen the talk show that she is mentioning about, but that talk show was a long time ago by the way that she's talking about it. So maybe like another episode or for it to be available on YouTube or for her to speak about it would be a good idea. Although she is doing it right here and right now on YouTube and I am watching it. So interesting interesting day and age everyone's like cancel that person cancel that person and it's like the thing is there was an entire production team around this situation like and even jay Manuel has come forward to say that he raised issues with it so it's like it's not that there was no no like moment of like a light bulb moment it's just literally just like the things that have happened on america's next top model like multiple people were involved in and i'm if no one said anything then the, the, everybody is at fault not just tyra banks but it's just that tyra banks is the forefront face for this entire franchise so it is weird that no one said anything or if they did some people said some things and then they were ignored. And that is where the problem lies, is that like either they were maliciously ignored. So when she says like there was no malintent, to ignore somebody who's saying to you that there is a problem with this photo shoot is a form of malintent. I'm leaving a bit of a question mark ar around that point that she's made. Bit of a question mark, bit of a question mark. Well, if we cancel everybody, then <laughs> nobody's going to exist anymore because yeah, we all we, make mistakes. All make mistakes. Right. We all make mistakes. Yeah. And I think it's, I think what's with the mistake, I think it's important to understand the intention. I think intention yeah. mm. is everything. And so when you, when you create mm. a dialogue and like, I love open dialogue for that person to say, well, why did you do that? And I, so if I explain and say, I think this is beautiful and that's why I was doing it, celebrating it. Yeah, but it's not, the thing is, you. it wasn't just about your skin colour. You were trying to do culturalism in a way that it didn't make sense. Like this whole scene here where they mention, but uh, listen to the drums in Botswana, and this is just African woman. Like, it makes no sense that you would then try and say like, I'm actually championing the beauty of my skin tone. That's not what this comes across as. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's not the intention here. The intention here is to, well, I don't even know what the intention is here. I don't know. The intention is to get ratings, it seems. And the very fact that you had to work on this photo shoot for a second time because nobody else would work on it. Did that not raise alarm bells? Not understanding that it opens the door for negativity. Now, if you think my intention was to make it negative and make it bad and to harken back to blackface back in the day, that was not my intention. My intention was probably the exact same intention that you have. I just went about it in a way that was a little ignorant. An okay. ignorant lack of knowledge. Back in the day, nobody complained about it. Yeah. But as we all evolve 20 years later, people are like, what the hell? Including me including the creator of the show. I look at it and I was like, uh. Boom, she's just dropped that little information uh, nugget there, which is that she is the creator of the show. So she is fundamentally responsible for everything the show does. It just made me sick. And so, you know, dialogue is really, really important to understand I'm disgusted by it too, you know? So we evolved together, I think. And it's crazy. One of the crazy things I find really ironic is um, the top model for this generation um, was the catalyst for a lot of the um, beauty diversity that we see today. Oh. We were on the forefront of all of that stuff, of what we're seeing today happen. Um, but at the same time, the godmother, not me, but the show was not perfect. And we messed up. I can count probably five times. I was like, what yeah. the hell was that? What the hell? Yeah. Well, um, that is the end of that video. Okay. Um, I'm really confused as to what, what we've just seen because like, I don't feel like a lot of questions were answered. I do feel a little bit softer, I suppose, against Tyra Banks, but I'm also a little bit more, I have more questions, more questions about what she has said. So I'm going to have a little quick look at the comments because I want to see what like other people have said that I haven't even thought about because this is six months old. It's got 235,000 views as of this moment right now, today. So I'm hoping that like, like people have said things that I haven't necessarily considered. So let's have a look. <laughs> they asked they asked Tyra one question and she talked for nine minutes. That is exactly correct. Exactly, exactly correct. Um, somebody else has said coming from a black person, obviously it's not racist. I don't think that's how racism works. I mean, they've got a point. Uh, Mary here says, she reminds me of a typical politician, talks a lot but says nothing, always deflecting from the actual question. So she did do a lot of deflecting, didn't she? And she also said a lot of words like dialogue. And I just feel like 
when you use these sorts of words, you're actually not really addressing the real point in the room, which is a bit confusing. And then somebody else here has said, so somehow she managed to talk to herself about herself to us. And that is exactly what it is. It was very self-indulgent. I managed to count two advertisements in that video that we have just watched in that nine minute video. So she mentioned her old Tyra Banks show that she used to do. So people are gonna go and naturally want to gravitate towards that and find that. And she also mentioned a book that she wrote with her mum. So it's just kind of like, there's two adverts in this nine minute video that she's actually said, I'm a bit conflicted about how I feel about this. All right, my lovelies, I'm gonna push my laptop away from me there and just like have a little bit of a reconciliation about what's just happened today. I feel like she didn't really talk about a lot of things in, um, in America's Next Top Model specific. She just kind of mentioned that one instance in that show, but she didn't actually say that that was the second time that she'd done it. And there was even a third time after that, which I haven't even covered in America's Next Top Scandal Girls. Let me take out my, oh, hang on, because I'm getting all irate, sis. I feel like you can make a mistake twice because once, you know, you can make a genuine mistake. You can be like, oh my God, I didn't know what I was doing. I'm so sorry about that. The second mistake can be a mistake in a similar vein, but then it's like something slightly different. So you can apologize for that as well and be like, oh my gosh, of course I can see the parallels with the last mistake that I made. When you make the same mistake three times, it starts to get a bit like, are you doing this deliberately? Like you must, something's not r quite right here. So I do kind of feel like that's, um, that's a thing. Very much so. Uh. One last comment here makes a really good point, and they say she's not apologizing for putting her models in blackface. She's apologizing for people not understanding. She's absolutely delusional. It's, she's kind of like shifting the blame onto the audience then by being like, oh, you didn't understand my intention. So my intention was something different, but you've taken it like that. That's a little bit gaslighty in my experience. Like you can easily admit to fault with something without saying, yeah, but you didn't like, sorry, you felt that way. Like, sorry, you didn't quite understand what I was trying to do. You've done something, you need to apologize, you need to own up for it, and then you need to move on. And I feel like in this situation, she's talking about cancel culture as if it's something like, oh, they just want to end my career. And I feel like in this case, it's not cancel culture, it's consequence culture. You've done something, you need to uh, say what you've done, and you need to know what you have done wrong, and then you need to apologize for it. But as she said, I must commend her for saying that um, it is her job to apologize, and also in 10 years time, if it rises again she needs to apologize again i very much champion champion that because like a mistake that you've made when you're a public figure does follow you not constantly so it overrules your life but if somebody else new apologizes for it you need to apologize again and state how you have tried to fix that problem that's just my little thought on that situation well, my loves, what do you think about all of that? Let me know in the comments box below. I, I don't feel very, like, satiated. I don't feel like I got any juice from that. I don't feel like I'm like, oh, Tyra's wonderful. Do you know what I mean? All right, so because I've now hit 20K followers on Instagram, I'm gonna change it a little bit up from this point forwards, my loves. So today's super special Twitch shout out goes to Ariel Wen. Thank you so much for following me over on Twitch, you stunning woman on the game. I stream three nights a week. That is Sunday, Monday, and Thursday. If you wanna be in with a chance of being featured in my next video, Twitch shout out, make sure you follow me over on Twitch, Luxaria Plays. And I want to say a massive thank you to my Patreons, you can see yourselves on the screen right here. And once again, I want to say a massive thank you and a huge shout out to my top tier Patreons and channel members. Stephanie Niatupski, Moragani Wolf, Erin Conkle, Magusta La Goose, Steffi Tech, Caitlin Wright, Megan Holly, Dana Broderick, Moldy Apple, and Orcos Samoji. Thank you so much for supporting the channel, my loves. You are enabling me to thrive. Make sure you check out Chicks in the Office, and I will see you in the next video, my gorgeous people.